Why do we work hard to solve small problems? Why do we reinvent ourselves and our clients over and over? And why are we giving away marketing strategy for free? It's time to bring home bigger paychecks. It's time to create the lifestyle we deserve and to make a greater impact. This is the Fractional CMO Show, and I'm Casey Stanton. Join me as we explore this growing industry and learn to solve bigger problems. Hey, it's Casey here, and in this episode, I want to talk to you about the seven stages of your commitment to being a fractional chief marketing officer. Oh, I think this is a fun one, and I'm excited to dive into it. Um, This comes from the work that Jason Gaddis has done at The Relationship School. I'm a big fan of Jason's work, and I think he really is a leader when it comes to interpersonal relationships and the dynamic there and uh, uh, kind of uh, like love relationships and partnerships and things like that. Um, But he talks about the seven stages of long-term partnership. And I think that there's a corollary to this in actually you becoming a fractional CMO. So the first thing is is the courtship. You can think of courtship in, in, in the dating and mating process. You know, what is courtship? It's kind of trying it on, right? It's kind of you thinking, ah, should I, should I become a fractional CMO or not? And a lot of people listening to this have, you know, they're currently in that process of the courtship. They're kind of, are, they're courting themselves as a potential fractional CMO. They're thinking, maybe I could leave my marketing agency and the noise machine that it's created where I'm only making one hundred and fifty dollars or $250,000 a year, but I'm working so much and I have all this responsibility and it feels like I can never get out from under it. Maybe there's an easier way. Maybe I could be the CMO of a couple companies and, and not have to worry about all that stuff I do with the agency and not have to deal with the finance side and the legal side and all of that stuff that I really dislike. So there's that courtship. The courtship phase is the important phase that you kind of got to get through to see if you're going to you know, commit or not to, um, to being a fractional CMO. And then from there is infatuation. I don't know about you, but... I can get infatuated with stuff, with things, with ideas, with kind of a future me. I really love the work of Derek Sivers. He was the guy who founded CD Baby. I've got all of his books, and I think you should too. Uh, he's got great books, um, books that you might not even think you want to read. Like y- it, One's called like Your Music and You. It's like for musicians, but there's so many great pieces of um, kind of wisdom in that. And... Um, Sievers talks about this idea of having a possible future. So what is a possible future? It's something that you try on. It's like, this is a possible future for me. One possible future is that I move to the foothills of Spain and uh, take over a small winery and have a, a small garden and a small family and I live out my last days there. That's a possible future. I've <laughs> certainly thought of it. Um, what's another possible future, right? You move to the middle of nowhere in Vermont. You've got a house powered by like a water mill, right? Something like that. I don't know. What's your possible future? Well, one possible future might be to be a fractional chief marketing officer. So you're kind of courting yourself and then maybe infatuation and you can get kind of lost in this idea of being a fractional CMO. That's the infatuation. I certainly was immediately when I was living in the RV right before our wedding, my wife, um, super stressed about the wedding. Um, and I was maybe, avoiding some of the planning by kind of thinking through work stuff. And um, I totally got infatuated with this idea of being a fractional CMO. I just like fell in love with it. Like I just wanted it, right? I was consuming all I could uh, at the time uh, about the field and how I could do it and the prices I could charge and all that. Just infatuation. And then the challenge phase. The challenge phase. This is the most important phase to get through. The challenge phase, if you think of it in a relationship, if you're in a partnership right now, have you gotten through the challenge phase? What is the challenge phase? It's, it's where there's a significant challenge in, in your partnership that you've just got to get through. Either you get through it and you're connected and you're, you're bonded deeper, or you don't pass through that challenge phase and you, and you stay kind of surface level. So what does that mean like in your career? There's the challenge phase. There's the challenge of maybe you go and win a client. Maybe you've got like a nice network. Maybe you're thinking of leaving a full-time employment and you're going to go grab a client or two, talk to your boss, be like, hey, I'm leaving. Can I take these clients with me? They're like, sure, good luck. You're off. You've got a client or two. You've got a decent living that you're making. And then you lose a client because of whatever reason. 
end of the service cycle. Um, uh, they want to take it in house. Um, there's a falling out that you have. Um, you're not able to deliver for them. Their business goes under. Whatever the reason is, you find yourself kind of infatuated with being a fractional CMO, but now challenged to to go win business. This is the hardest thing to get through. Because when you're in this position, it's your identity. I'm a fractional CMO. And then there's the reality. Well, I'm only serving one client and I'm really not making a living. So you then have to kind of get through that challenge phase through building a pipeline, having a confident sales process, and regularly going out and winning new business to stack up your fractional CMO um, clients. You know, you want, it kind of depends on who you are, but maybe you want two, three, four, five clients. That's really the right mix, I think, for most people. Two to five clients. Uh, if you have one, you lose them, you lose all your money, right? You have more than five, it becomes, I think, too much of a psychic load. Your brain's just kind of context switching too often, and I think it can be kind of difficult. So, you know, two to five-ish clients is what you got. You got to get through that challenge phase. Is that where you are right now? Is you're on the precipice of the challenge phase? You have a challenge ahead of you that says hey, you're a good marketer, you've done well for other people, but can you be the person that you say you are to yourself? Do you believe in yourself? And can you go do the action required to be that person? Which is build the pipeline, stack business, win clients, serve them so that they're thrilled with you and wanna continue working with you for years to come. See, again, this is the thing about being a fractional CMO is that you're not just a 90-day fractional CMO for a company. Maybe that's how your engagement starts, but it's all with the intent of a long-term commitment. You don't want to be in the business of constantly rotating out clients and getting new clients in that pay you about the same rate for similar work because it's just like crushes you with all of the effort that's required to prospect, to close, to collect payment, to do the work, to spin them down. It's just a revolving door and it's tough. So you got to get through that challenge phase. And then Jason goes into talking about other things, which is maybe more about a partnership, right? Like collaboration. That's what Jason calls the fourth phase, which is like mature love and establishing security. Well, there certainly is a level as a fractional CMO where you establish security. I used to work in a marketing agency and it was feast or famine. Some months, you know, at the time I thought I was doing well, I'd bring in $10,000, $11,000, something like that. And then other months, I'd bring in two or three thousand dollars, and two or three thousand dollars was definitely famine. My expenses were uh, much higher than that. So security was for my family. Security was for my wife. Um, now for my kids, like security is knowing every single month I've got the income coming in as a fractional CMO. I know how much money is coming in, no matter what, with zero risk. And without me working full time to deliver it. So then I can go spend time doing other stuff. Establishing security happens once you get through the challenge phase. You can't establish financial security if you don't have a challenge first. The challenge is going to be your pipeline. It's going to be your predictability and being able to serve clients. Um, The sixth and seventh stages, uh, sixth is expansion. Maybe we could say, you know, in in a relationship, it's expansion. It's getting deeper. It's a deeper connection. Um, Maybe as a fractional CMO, that expansion is asymmetric upside. Finding ways for you to take your trick, which is to be really good at marketing and leadership, and apply that to businesses and opportunities that are in front of you or that you go seek out to create an asymmetric upside. So instead of being paid, let's say, $10,000 a month for the work, you're being paid Uh, zero cash and $30,000 a month on um, your success. So you're making three times the rate, but you're taking on a little risk. That's kind of maybe the expansion part. And then Jason says stage seven is ending. That's the ending of a partnership. Well, how do partnerships end? You break up or somebody dies. At some point, you'll stop being a fractional CMO. I truly believe um, I'll be a fractional CMO till the day I die. Like that, that's just how I see the world. That's just how I solve problems. I'm, I'm the guy who looks at things as a marketer, as a marketing leader, and I try to solve problems that way. I'm the guy who's going to zoom out and see the big picture and see how those things fit together and then find the operators to do the actual labor. That's where my value is. 
I can't see, you know, me changing and, and becoming a, a finance nut at some point or, you know, uh, me getting really into roofing. Like, that's just not going to be what I do the rest of my life. What I'm going to do is solve bigger problems and delegate everything except leadership. Those are our two big mantras here at the uh, CMOX Accelerator. So I, I think this is just like a fun uh, heuristic to kind of consider your career that you're going to go through the courtship, which is you're trying it on, see if it fits for you, see if you want to be a fractional CMO. And then you'll become infatuated with it, likely. Then you'll go through a challenge phase. Maybe. I think you can see a lot of people in your life who are in committed relationships that really haven't gone through that challenge phase. They're not really a unified team. Um, they don't really have one another's back, right? Stan Tatkin, in his book Wired for Love, calls it a couple bubble, where you do what's necessary to support your partner and, and really have their back. Right? That's the challenge phase as the individuals or as the couple, so what they work through. And in, and, in, and in becoming a fractional CMO, you have a challenge phase, which is being able to actually be this person, having this identity by doing the things required. And I'll tell you, I wasn't good at having a pipeline. That was my biggest fault. It wasn't being good at marketing. I thought I was a good marketer. It was having a pipeline. I could serve anybody, except nobody was giving me money. Right? So where do you fall on that? After challenge, you know, collaboration, establishing security. Security for me as a fractional CMO was great clients that I enjoyed serving, that paid me well, regularly and on time without fuss, and not taking my full work week. Like, to me, that's security. And then expansion and, and ending. So this is kind of an interesting way, I think, to look at the work that you're doing as a fractional CMO, but just kind of see where you are on that scale. I'll tell you where it's really fun. It's that expansion side, where you're confident that you're working half the time that you used to work, making the same or twice as much or, or more, um, delivering great value to your clients. And then you're just kind of looking for where you fit in, where you're a great um, solution to a problem that exists. And then you hop right in there, you do the thing that you're incredibly good at, or the thing that you get better and better at, and you get rewarded financially for it. You also get rewarded because the things that you're doing are fun and successful, and you're working with great people, and everyone's motivated because they're growing and learning, and the future's big and bright. Super exciting time. So I hope some of that kind of ring true for you, and you kind of get a sense of where you are. One of the biggest things that happens as an entrepreneur is um, self-understanding, the self-reflection that we get. I, I, I've never been more self-reflective than I have as an entrepreneur. Like my marriage is great and my entrepreneurship, those two things together, boom, that's who I am. Like that shows me where I have fear, fear of presenting a higher price to a potential client. Ooh, maybe that's a value thing, my worthiness thing. You know, am I, am I actually worth that? Who, who am I to charge that kind of fee? Maybe that comes up for you. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you've got no problem charging super high rates. That's cool too. Can you actually deliver on it? Right? Do you have alignment between your rates and your actual delivery? What about your ability to tell people about the results that you've made? Does that feel weird? There's all these different places that kind of come up for us as like interpersonal issues um, that, you know, you might have had your whole life. Um, and I think being an entrepreneur, being a fractional CMO, going out, winning business, building a half million dollar a year fractional CMO practice, you're going to get a spotlight shed right on it. So self-reflection is the secret to all of this, to see where you're at, to see what comes up for you, to see the pains and the concerns and the frustrations, the worries, the anxiety, the stress, whatever it is for you, like that's just, that's just going to come out as an entrepreneur. So the more self-reflective you can be, the more maps you can build of yourself to kind of understand where you are, maybe financially, where you are in these seven stages, um, where you are uh, kind of overcoming some of your fears or concerns, that's just going to help make you stronger. You are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. It's a fact. Everything that's in front of you is an opportunity for you if you choose to jump on it. But you're right where you're supposed to be. You're not early, you're not late, you're right where you're supposed to be. So the question is, what do you wanna do with the opportunity that's ahead of you? If you wanna jump into the CMOX Accelerator and maybe I can help you, coach you on building your practice to a half million a year, um, I'd love to hear from you. You can uh, book a 
call with my team at cmox.co slash call. Go ahead and book a time. Uh, we've got a typically availability Monday through Friday. We try to cross multiple time zones. So if that feels like something that's interesting, hop on a call with one of my team members for 15 minutes and they'll ask you a couple questions. You can ask them a couple questions and, and just kind of see if this makes sense for you, if you want to have some support. We recently had a member who um, was bringing in 3000 a month as a fractional CMO and then went toe-to-toe, head-to-head against um, a- another company, which is actually an agency that offered fractional CMO services. And this guy won. And he won because... Not because he had a trick, but because he was really good at stating how good he was and how he could help the client. And he had proof for it. He was the right guy for the job, and the client saw it. I mean, that was a big kind of head-to-head battle, and he came out victorious. And it's because he had the confidence in himself and the confidence that he knew that he could help the client. And then the, the commitment to kind of continue to go after that account and ultimately win it. He asked us a bunch of questions along the way, uh, some positioning stuff, things like that, uh, and we were there to support him. So if you want that level of support, if you want someone who's been there before who can show you um, the more direct path, I won't call it a shortcut, right, because there's still work to do for you, but it's not all the guessing. You don't have to figure it out on your own. You don't have to take years to do it. You can do it in three months or six months or eight months or you know whatever, whatever makes sense for you and your lifestyle. Uh, I'd love to, I'd love to support you. So go ahead and book a time with us at cmox.co forward slash call. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you for joining us for today's show. For more information and episodes, visit our site at fractionalcmoshow.com. Go ahead and punch that like and subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. It means a lot, at least to my mom. 